hello one so in this video we're going to build a small project but an interesting project where we're going to be able to change the font size of some text that we're going to have and you can implement this in your own website because there are websites with accessibility options where you can increase the font size if it's too small for you or you can decrease the font size if it's too large for you so when i click on the increase font size button then it's going to increase the font size by 4 pixels the default one that I've set is 16 so when I click increase font size then it increases the font size and then when I click on decrease font size it decreases the font size up to a minimum of 16 pixels and if you try to go be below this then it's going to show an alert that says you cannot go lower than 16 pixels and then the maximum that I've set is 168 pixels so if you try to go above 168 pixels, then it shows you another alert that says you can go higher than 168 pixels. So I've built this project out in Next.js and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear everything that I have. In order to create a new Next.js project, all you need to do is say npx create next app and then you give your application a name that you want and you can do that in your command line or in your terminal. Once you do that, what you're going to have is the structure that you're seeing here. The only difference is your index.js is not going to look like this. It's going to have the default next.js index file. And then the style.css is also going to have some different styles. The transition that I've added here is for the transition when you're increasing the font size so that it, does, it doesn't just pop in or pop out, for lack of a better word. And then I've added a slight background color, a gray background color here and the text I've set it to 283 which is a dark gray. So this styles, I'm going to keep these styles inside. I'm also using tailing CSS by the way, so that it's, it just increases or rather um, improves the workflow. So what I'm going to do is inside my index.js here, I'm going to remove everything that starts from this part. So all the way up to here, oops, we made first shift. So remove everything here and then we can remove this bucket as well and then for now we're just going to return an h1 an h1 that says font size changer and then i can save this and what is going to happen is on the screen this is going to reset and it's going to say font size change and then i'm going to place this to the left and then we're going to have our next js application to the right and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to build out the ui first and then we're going to add in the functionality later so the first thing I want to do is I actually don't want to render the H1 by itself. I want to render a div so that I can give this div a padding all round of H to push everything inwards. And then I can render the H1 so that the H1 is no longer on the edge. You can see that it pushes inwards. And then I can give this H1 a class name of text-4xl for small screens. And then for large screens, we're going to increase the text to 6xl. And then we're going to change it to font-bold. And then we're going to save it and it's going to change the font into bold and then we, have, we can also save text center for the h1 and you know what i also want this font to change so in next.js version 13 you can actually use google fonts without having to import them in your css file so all you need to do is define the google font like you're seeing inside here and by the way this is default this is the default google font that you're going to have in your next.js project so you're not even going to touch this line all you need to do is go inside the element or inside your parent component that you want to have the style that you've imported and then inside the class name you need to give the the class name a variable here and call it enter dot class name and enter because that is the current name of the variable that you have here that we are importing the google font that is called enter and then now you can continue to add in your custom styles we had a padding all round of it and you can see now that this is now changed to the interfont and then below this we are going to say we're going to create a ul with full list items and then this list items are going to be buttons so this first one is going to say decrease font or decrease font size and then the second one is going to say increase font size and then we're going to save it and we're going to have these two buttons and then for the ul i want to give it a class name of flex so that they are aligned in a raw form and then i'm going to say items dash center and justify dash center 
and I give it a gap all round of 4 just to separate it out a bit and I give it a margin top of 10 to push it away from this h1 and then for the button I'm going to give this a class name of padding on the y of 2 and padding on the x of 6 with a very slight rounded border with a slight box shadow and then I'm going to give it a custom bg of bg and then my square brackets hashtag 333333 and then I'm going to change the text to white and then when I hover over the button I want the bg to go into once again a bg dash bg dash and then hashtag 222222 so that now we're going to have this for the button see that a very slight transition and once again this transition is because of this right here so I've set this transition to be on everything because I don't want to go one by one into all the elements but it is not recommended that you do this okay this is just for a demonstration and then we're going to copy these tabs here for the button and paste them on this bottom button and save it and we're going to have the same thing for this bottom button and then below this ul we're going to have a paragraph that is going to say the current font size is and then we're going to add in a variable here but for now i'm just going to say 16 pixels we this is going to be dynamic depending on the current font size that we are showing and when i save it we're going to have this let's give this some custom styles let's say class name text dash to xl and then let me say margin bottom of margin top of 10 sorry to push away from this part and then for this part that shows the current size i want it to be inside a span so that i can go inside this span and give it a class name of font dash bold and then text dash 3xl just to make it a bit larger than the rest and then finally what do we need to do we need to add in the text so below this let's return a div and then we're going to give it two paragraphs so let's just say lorem like 20 and then let's delete this default here and then let's add another paragraph say lorem 30 and then let's delete this default and then we can add in even another paragraph let's say lorem 40 and then let's delete this default for the example that i showed we did not have many paragraphs i just added in this these others just to show you that it can work even if you have it on your entire website and then what we're going to do is inside this div i'm going to give this div a class name of flex now flex is going to align them in row form the reason why i'm adding flex here is so that i can add a gap of four all round or maybe of eight all round just to separate out the paragraphs and then i also want them to have a flex of color now i do realize that i can go inside the paragraphs and add a margin bottom on each one of them to separate them out but i think this one is better just for me my own personal preference okay and then let's go ahead and say margin top of 10 to push away from this part so this is the paragraph that we have and let's see what else we need to do the demonstration had a kind of like a blurring red background that i added so let's add in that before we can begin to add in our functionality so we're going to create a div here and then this div we're going to give it a class name of absolute and then we're going to say bring it to the left by 50 percent which is a half and then bring it from the top by 50 percent which is also a half and then give it a width of let's say about 52 and then on large screens we're going to give it a width of let's say 400 pixels and then we're also going to give it a height of 52 for small screens and then for large screens we're going to give it a height of dash 400 pixels and then we're going to say bg red 500 and we're going to see it somewhere here on the center or not really on the center it is a bit offset in order to bring it to the perfect center what we need to do is we need it to translate on the x-axis by minus 50 percent and translate on the y-axis by minus 50 percent which is going to place it to the center so the two limit classes that we're going to use is minus translate trans okay translate on the x-axis by one and a half sorry a half and then minus translate oops minus translate i can't type translate on the y-axis by a half which is now going to bring it to the perfect center and then i don't want it to be on the top of the text so we're going to give a give it a negative z index or minus z index of 10 which is going to bring it behind the text and then i want it to be blurred out so we're going to say blur it by dash let's say about 250 pixels which is going to do that okay this it's not really visible on mobile i want it to be visible on mobile so let's say 150 yes 
and then for large screens we're going to say large by dash 250 pixels and then save it and on large screens it's going to be this one see that and then on small screens it appears just like a smaller one and then let's limit all this i've just realized let's limit so that it doesn't go all the way to the end let's go inside this parent div and right here we're going to give it a max width of let's say 3xl and an mx of auto which is going to center it and we're going to have that and then now we can begin to add in our functionality because we we need to be able to click on this to increase the font size and then click on this to decrease the font size so let's go ahead and do this we have imported the use state and also imported the head the head is so that we can change the document title for now let's go ahead and set up our state values so we're going to have one state value that i'm going to call size and a set size and then this is going to be equal to use state by default it's going to be 16 because i want the default size to be 16 pixels and then once we have that we can now substitute this part for our dynamic variable so where we had this text where is it here instead of rendering 16 hard coding it we can now render the size which is our variable and you'll notice that nothing changes but if i now go ahead and change this to like 28 then this font size is going to say 28 pixels and that is what we want so let's set it back to 16 and then what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the button and we're going to add an on click on the decrease font size and we're going to say when we click on this button then what i want to do is i want to add my inline function and say set the size into the size state value plus four now you can set this to plus one plus two plus three plus four or another font size that you want but i'm just using i'm just using plus four so that we can see a significant change in the font size and then we're going to do the opposite on this bottom one so just copy this and paste it here change this into minus four uh wait a minute this should be plus this should be minus i mixed up the buttons so save it and what you're going to notice is that when i click on this decrease font size it's going to reduce this value look at this it decreases the value right and when i click on increase font size it increases the value but nothing changes here that is because now we need to send the font size of this to be dependent on the current font size that we're having and the way we do that is by going inside the paragraph and giving it a style attribute so styling it out and then we're going to say that the font size for this paragraph is going to be dependent on the current size which is our state value that we have so that when i save this look at what is going to happen for this first paragraph when i say decrease font size it reduces the font size right and this is not really readable as you can see and then when i click on increase font size it increases the font size now we want to do this for the rest of the paragraphs as well and the way we're going to do that is just copy this part and paste it here and paste it here so that now the all the paragraphs are going to be dependent on the current font size that we have would you look at that now what you need to do is when the font size gets really small i mean i don't want it i don't want to have a font size of zero right so what i'm going to do is we're going to perform a check here and we're going to add an if statement and we're going to say that if the size is less than 16 pixels oops, then what we're going to say is set size into 16 pixels meaning it's not going to go beyond this or below this so i'm going to save it and then you'll notice that when i reach 16 pixels it no longer shrinks down less than 16 pixels because we are hold, we are saying that when you reach 16 pixels do not go beyond 16 pixels so set the size always to be 16 pixels and then we're going to do the same thing for when the font size is greater than 160 pixels now this is a bit large uh, for my test because you can't really have 160 pixels on your website for for text that you want people to read right so probably i should set this into a smaller text maybe like 72 and then we're saying that when the font size is greater than 72 then always set the font size to 72 so that now this is 16 i can't go beyond 16 and when i go ahead up to 72 then 72 becomes the maximum would you look at that and then what i want to do is when i hit the maximum i want to display an alert so below this i'm going to say a lot and we're going to say you can't go higher than 72 pixels and then what you're going to see is when i click on this now it shows an alert you can go higher than 72 pixels and then we're going to do the same thing here 
and we're going to say this is going to be 16 pixels so that when I click on this, go below 16 pixels, then it shows this. And that's what we want to happen. So that's looking nice. Now, what if you changed this into 14 pixels and perhaps this into what? Uh, 80 pixels. What you're going to notice is, look at the alert. The alert still says 16 pixels, right? Even though we are setting the font size, would you look at that? Now look at this problem that we have. Look at this problem. See that? That is because we are setting the font size here to 14, which is already less than this. And we're saying that when the font size is less than 16 here, then this should always trigger, right? That means that this part is always going to trigger no matter what happens. See that? So always make sure that this is I'm matching together with this, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have issues. And then I've just realized that this should say lower. You can't go lower than 16 pixels, and this should say higher. Okay, so let's save it. And then, oops, this is still having issues. Let it reload. <laughs> okay, you know what? As it's reloading, what I want to do is I want to display this title because I don't want the title to say locals 3000, right? So remember that we have the head imported here. What you can do is right above this, we can render the head element or the head component. And it's actually should be called a component. And then instead here, we're going to have the title attribute where I'm going to say font size changer in Next.js. And then we're going to have that so that, okay, this is having issues. Let's reload it. So local host 3000. And we're going to have that. So decrease font size, it shows this, and then increase font size, what is happening? Okay, and increase font size is going to show this. So that is working as we expect it to work. Okay, what? Oh, did I do something? Oh, this should remain 72, sorry. That should remain 72, otherwise we're going to have the same issue. Okay, now we need to reload it, right? And there we go. Would you look at that? Now, probably something that you've noticed is that when I click on this, when this is less than 16 pixels, the alert shows twice. So the first one is there, and then the second one shows, and then it disappears. The reason why that happens is because of React strict mode, which you can read about in the React documentation. This is only going to happen during development. So when you deploy this application, it's going to work correctly. But the reason why it happens once again is because of react.strict mode. And would you look at that? That is going to be the end of the project. So now I just need to deploy it to GitHub so you can have access to this source code. So let me create a new repository. So create a new repository here. And I'm going to call it font size changer. And then let's say create repository. And then you can shut all of this down. And then you can shut all of this down. And then shut down. Okay. And then let's copy this link and then we're going to say git oh, sorry not init because it already has it already has a uh, git repository so i'm going to say git remote add origin and then paste in our link and then git push dash u origin main and then i want to cd into my source folder so okay is this going to load in today okay there we go finish and then let's say cd into the source folder and then i'm going to say git add pages oops pages dang it and then git commit let's say uh what is it what should we say for the index yes let's say update component and then git add styles and say git commit i'm going to say global styles global styles and then git push which is going to push it to the remote repository and you're going to have access to it. So there we go. So that now when I reload this page, you're going to have access to the source code right there. And so that is going to be the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.